My granny said, I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Love and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the Lost Treasure Expedition nearly came to a disastrous end yesterday when Lum and Abner tried to talk Cedric into taking them back into the company and sharing the treasure with them. Their method was to point out the pitfalls of great wealth. And so strongly did they impress Cedric that he tore up the treasure map. As we're looking on a little band of treasure hunters now, we find them very early in the morning digging in someone's farmyard. Cedric, watch where you're throwing that dirt. Most of it's going right in my face. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Abner. Oh, yes. Oh, cut down the old pine And don't tree. sing now. Mom told you not to, Cedric. No, we don't want to wake up the fella that owns this property. I was hoping we could dig up the treasure and get out of here before anybody finds out we was here. Mm, don't look like we're going to be able to do it, though, Mom. The sun's coming up yonder now. Yeah. Come on, work faster, Cedric. Yes, Mom. Mom, can the fella that owns this property law through us for digging here? Well, I don't know whether they can or not, Abner. See, I figure he owns the property all right, but I don't believe he owns what's buried down underneath the property. No. Special when we never own the stuff that's down there in the first place. No, but we we got a big hole dug through his property to get the stuff out of, though. Can he law through us for that? Well, maybe that might be trespassing, but I don't believe we'd get much of a fine for that. Well, even if it was a big one, we wouldn't care, not after we dig up all that treasure here. No, but you sure we're digging in the right place? Well, to be right honest, I ain't, Abner. But this is as close as I could come to it, trying to figure it out from that tore up piece of map that we got. Some of the pieces was missing, too. Mm. We, we got the one with the X on it. Yeah, I know. I wish we sure. I hate to do all this work for nothing. That blame you, Cedric, for tying that up anyway. The body that's idiotic enough to tear up a perfect good map. I don't oh, know what oh, oh, oh. I, I fear to that. Huh? Look, there comes some man. Must be the owner. Oh, my goodness. What, what do we do now, Ron? No, no. Better stand our ground. He saw us, and he's heading this way. I believe one of us hit him with a shovel, and then we all jumped no, on him. No, we ain't going to do no such a thing. Well, I don't want to get lawsuit for traipsing, or trespassing, or whatever it is. Well, don't worry. Just leave everything up to me. I'll talk him out of it. You just watch. I hope he do. I might offer him some of the treasury. I don't know. Hey there, you fellas! I don't guess we better run. I don't like the sound of his voice. No, stand still, Edna. Back, Georgia. You fellas are early birds, I'll say that for you. Yeah, yeah, I reckon you're right. But now, if you'll just let me explain to you why... Gummy, it's quite a hole you got dug there already. Yeah, it is. But you see, Mr. Weasel... Are you sure you're digging in the right place? Huh? The right place? Yeah. Of course, you might strike it here, Tad. I guess you fellas know more about this than I do. It's your business. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's right, I reckon. Uh, What did you use, a divining rod? No, we used a map. Map, huh? Yeah. Well, that's a good way, I've heard tell. I don't understand much about maps myself. I always set more store by a divining rod. <laughs> in fact, is, I had a man out here not more than a couple of weeks ago with a divining rod, and he figured it ought to be right over, uh, about right here. He did, huh? Well, Danny, that's good news, because we wasn't sure ourselves. Wait a minute. You ain't been digging for this yourself, have you? Me? Oh, no, no. I ain't no hand at nothing like this. I ain't got the time for it, no how. Hmm. But all I can do is keeping up with the chores around the place. Well, I'll let you fellas get back to work. I've got some plowing that ought to be done by sundown. Well? I uh, hope you strike it rich. I'm pretty sure you're in the right place now. Well, good. Uh, I'll drop back later on to see how you're coming. So long. Yeah, so long. Yeah, so long. So long. Hmm. I'll be a polka-dotted possum. Now, what do you know about that? Oh, my goodness, there's one of the nicest fellas I've ever run up again. Oh, yeah. 
I wish that a lot of fellas is my uncle, but I wish he's my uncle and aunt both. <laughs> he's nice. He is nice. Yes. Oh, he ain't got his beat, I don't believe. No. Him. Well, I love and admire him. If everybody in Tennessee is as nice as he is, I love and admire Tennessee, the whole caboodle of it. Uh, after we dig up the treasure, I believe I'll settle down here just to be near him. No, because I'm a good mind to move in with you, Cedric. Uh, no, I'll be able to place my own as long as I'm going to be rich. Well, here, <laughs> come on. We better get to digging here. None of us will get rich. Yeah, yeah. This is the place right here where he told us to dig, Benny. Yeah, I believe that's right. Just about right here is where he pointed to. Come on, Cedric. Get to work. Just for a moment, I'm getting. No, I can't get over this one. That fella never even brought up the subject of loss of one at all. Mm -hmm. Well, he could more than likely tell by just looking at me that I'd talk him out of it faster than he could bring it up. He could, huh? You take a nice fella like him. He can spot a smart man like me every time, looks like. Mm -hmm. I thought sure we was in for it when he said that was quite a hole we'd dug going that other place, sir. Yeah, I was a little worried there myself. But he didn't care to mind none. No? Just told us a better place to dig, so. Careful with that shovel, Cedric. Oh, excuse me. Knock my head plumb off with it if you ain't careful. I reckon how come this fella to know about the buried treasure here? I thought that we were the only ones that knowed about it. Well, it's more than likely common knowledge around this part of the country. It is. Yeah, as long as this is where it's buried at. More than likely, folks around here has talked about it as far back as they can read the lake. Must be some big stories about this thing. Huh. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me none, but that was the reason why this fellow bought the property in the first place. You know, reckon why he ain't dug up the treasure himself, then? Well... More likely, like he says, he just ain't had time to get around to it. And more than likely, he ain't been able to hire nobody to help him on account of the manpower shortage. Yeah, yeah, more likely. It's hard to hire anybody these days. Sure is. Yeah, that's why he's being so nice to us about you. He's just been waiting for somebody to come along and help him dig it up. Reckon he's going to claim all this treasure for himself, huh? Oh, I don't think so. He's too nice for that. Besides, uh, we figured out that it belongs to us. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. But I believe we ought to give him a good size share of it. Seems only right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be the only thing to do, all right. Cause he's so nice. And then you got to consider the facts that this is his land we're digging on. Yeah. His land, yeah, yeah. And he told us where to dig at, too. Yeah, well, he these are some of the treasure, all right. If he hadn't have told us where about to dig at, why, we might have dug that other hole clean through the shiny. Cedric, now watch out with that shovel. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for Mr. Adams. i hit one of them. Clumsy, I don't know what's the matter. Well, you sure are. I'm just anxious to find that treasure. I don't hardly know what I'm doing, hardly, I don't think. Yeah, well, I don't much blame you, Cedric. I'm getting sort of anxious myself. <laughs> Every rock I see, I think, sure, it's going to be a diamond or animals. <laughs> well, let's not talk so much and concentrate on digging. I thought, sure, we'd come across some of the treasure by now, though. At least we a wristwatch or a fountain pen or something like that. Well, I reckon this stuff will all be in one big box. A box? Yeah, that's the way the generality of the, them old pirates and explorers always buried their treasury. Hmm. Big old iron chest, sort of like a trunk. Well. A big lock on it. I recollect one time reading where some fellas dug up an old box and it was filled with pieces of eight. Pieces of eight? Yes, sir. Eight what? I don't know. Never said. Just said pieces of eight and let it go with that. Hmm. Must have broke it, I reckon. They got that turned around, though. Cedric, careful with that shovel. Excuse right? me, excuse me, excuse me. They must have got that turned around. Must have been eight pieces or something. Must have. That still don't tell us what the pieces was all, though. Don't reckon it could have been pieces of pie, because I don't believe pie'd stand up that long. I don't know. Some of that pie Luke Spears puts out in that restaurant back home tastes like they might have been dug up sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I believe a man could have sold his shoes if that pie crust. I wish I had a piece of that pie right now. Say, that reminds me, whatever become of that gooseberry pie we brought along on this trip? Uh, gooseberry pie, did you say, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Mama baked that up special for me, and I don't recollect eating none of it. Oh. 
Well, I believe that must have got ate, ate up somewhere or other, though. Abner, watch your grammar there. Oh. Got ate up. That's terrible. We want to be rich. We got to learn ourselves how to talk. What's wrong with got ate up? Supposed to be got ate up. Oh. See, the way you congregate that word is like this. I eat, you eat, and they done it. We will have it, and they might, could have it. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll recollect now. I would have ate, you would have ate, they would have eaten. Wish they would have not have it and all of it and let me have a piece. So, uh, so as I could have will have it too also. Yeah, well, you see, Cedric, the way it all happened. I right, know, just wait a minute, there comes that nice feller back again. <laughs> Bound you, he'll have his woman fix us up some laminate and some sandwiches if we ask him to. You know what, Mom? I'm I hungry. would be a bit surprised if he brought up the subject and made that suggest himself. Uh, hi, fellas. Uh, how, how you coming? Oh, fair to middling well, I reckon. We ain't struck it yet, though. Well, I never allowed you to strike it this quick. Well, I reckon how deep we'll have to go here. Well, generally, in this part of the country, it's about 30 feet before you strike water. Water? Well, uh, Sure. Ain't you the fellers they sent out to dig a new well for me? My granny, Zemmer, I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, after two days of fruitless search for the buried treasure, Lum, Abner, and Cedric turned the remains of their treasure map over to the owner of the property where they'd been digging, and then they started their homeward journey. As we look in on the tired travelers today, we find them in a telegraph office in Little Rock, Arkansas. Listen. Well, go ahead, Lum. Write that telegram. Don't just stand there squinting your eyes that way. Well, I'm just studying how to say it. Studying? Well, Lord, me, there ain't nothing to study about. Give me one of them telegraph blanks there. I'll write it. Cedric, let me have that pencil there. Yes, ma'am. Reckon what they got the pencils chained to the desk for this way. More likely to keep folks from stealing it. Dear Grandpappy Spears. Let's see how a little old pencil could keep nobody from stealing a big desk. Don't bother me, Cedric. I'm writing the telegrams here. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Abbott. Yeah, well, this is all we gotta say. We are broke in Little Rock. Send twenty dollars to get home. Your true friends, Abner and Long. And Cedric, I want to get home too. All right, and Cedric. How's that, Long? Well, uh, it's too long for one thing, Abner. Can't be over ten words, you know. Well, I'll cut it down. Just scratch that out right there. Take that Don't out. Don't scratch there. me out. Now we are broke. Send twenty dollars. How's that? Well, that's way under ten words. Oh, well, I'll put some of them back in, you see. No, uh, I ain't worried about getting the ten words. What bothers me is how to say what we want to say. I've done said it. We are broke. Send twenty dollars. Yeah, but I don't want to put it just that way, Abner. Uh huh. I sort of hate to admit we're broke and that we're coming home empty handed. Well, I do too, but we can't just stay here in Little Rock and starve to death. Oh, we got fifty one cents twixt the three of us, just about enough to send a telegram. Yeah, but I, I wish we could find some words that don't make it sound like we was such complete failures with our treasure expedition. Well, we ain't complete failures, are we? <laughs> Practical. We ain't bringing back no buried treasure. No, but that fella that owns a property where it's supposed to be buried, he's going to keep on digging for it. We give him the treasury map or what was left of it, and he's going to send us half of anything he digs up. Yeah, but just twixt me and you, I don't think he's going to dig up very much treasury. You know, huh? you know, all that digging we done there, we never come across a single diamond necklace, not even a scrap or a stick pen or a wristwatch or nothing. No, but maybe if we'd dug just a little longer, why? Well, we okay. couldn't hardly do that, though. Got to get back to the store, and Cedric's vacation's just about up. This mm-hmm. I ought to be back at the war plant tomorrow by actual rights. Yeah, well, we better get this telegram sent then and get home quick as we can. Here, send this, Mom. Dear Grandpap, we are broke. Send $20. 
That's the best way to say it. Well, maybe so, but still, I hate to do it that way. It'll make us the laughing stocks of the whole town. Laughing stock? Why, sure. After all that big talk we made about coming back with our car loaded down with gold and silver and platinum knickknacks and how he was all going to be a million thousandaires. Now here we are, flat broke, begging Grandpap for money to get home on. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean, Sergeant. Yeah, I don't know how else to write the telegram, though, Long. Well, maybe we could start it out something like, uh, everything going along great. Or something like that. Yeah, could. Might say everything going along great, except we're broke. Uh, no, we don't want to say that, do we? No. Nah. Oh, you know, it's hard to get away from saying we're broke, Lum, as long as that's what we're trying to say. Uh-huh. Say, uh, how would this telegram be? Uh, uh, we are needing money bad. No, that ain't no good. No, that's no good. It's the, uh... I got one here. Cheers and good wishes to a fine young man on his graduation day. Graduation day? Yes, Mom. That's my favorite telegram, I believe. I've always wanted to send that to somebody. Well, Grandpappy Spears ain't graduating from school, Cedric. What we want to do is borrow some money from him. Well, there's some other telegrams here. Let's see. What you have to do is just check the one you want. You don't have to write it out or nothing. Hey, let me see that thing, Cedric. Where'd you get this, anyway? Oh, I've been saving it. I picked it up at the telegraph office at the county seat about two years ago. Well. Now, I figured I might have to send a telegram someday, and I didn't want to be caught short-handed. I know, as long as it says here that you can send these for just 25 cents. Uh, That'll save us some money. Have enough left over to get some crackers to nibble on. Oh, well, in the first place, them telegrams won't fit. In the second place, the telegram company has cut them out. It says right here in black and ink. Yeah, but Cedric just now said he picked it up two years ago. Oh, that's right. Logan, that's a shame because there's some pretty good ones here. Congratulations, Dad and Mom, on your wedding anniversaries. Hope you have many more. Logan, that's pretty, you know. That is pretty. You know, I like that. I, I like this next one better. Just hear the good news that a tiny visitor has to come to live with you. Congratulations. R- reckon who that tiny visitor is, a, a midget or a shorty foster, somebody like that? I don't know. Don't say. Has Shorty went to visit somebody? Oh, for goodness sakes. Will you two throw that thing away and let me concentrate on this here telegram I'm trying to write? Well, Lom, I don't think we have to worry so much about it. Just say we're broke. We need $20. We're just sending a telegram to Grandpappy Spears, not to the whole town of Pine Ridge. You're sending a telegram to Grandpappy just the same as sending it to the whole town. No, he can't keep nothing to himself. No, no, you're right about that. We might could say right in a telegram that he ain't supposed to mention this to nobody else. Well, that'd just make it worse. Quick as Grandpa figured it was a secret of some kind, he'd be more anxious than ever to spread it around town. Yeah, I reckon you're right. He does love to carry gossip around. He's a big blabbermouth if I ever seen oh, one. Oh, he's a gum beater. Jaw flapper. Gossip mongrel if I ever seen one. He's worse than Sister Simpson any day. I wish we didn't have to send him this telegram, to be honest. I do, too. But I don't know no other way out of this. No. We can't stay here. We've got to get home some way. And I know he'll be glad to loan us some money. Yeah, wait, Mom. I know what we can do. Grandpap will never expect we're broke, neither. We, we can send him the, the telegram I wrote down there, asking him to send the money, but we won't use our names. We'll just sign it uh, Mr. Smith or something like that. Yeah, that's a good... <laughs> No, 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 that won't work. Huh? Granddad ain't going to send no $20 to somebody you don't even know. Oh, that's right, yeah, let's see. How can we write that telegram? Let me study here now. Greg and Uncle Dave would like to get this. Huh? Congratulations and a great big hug for a tiny tot on her fourth birthday. Cedric, you might just as well throw that thing away. It ain't no good no more. Oh, I'm... Love to send Uncle Dave a telegram. He don't get many of them. Listen, Sam. Here's a good one for him. Thousands are in these stands cheering you on to victory. I hope you make a touchdown today. Listen, Cedric, we just got enough money to send one telegram, so just forget Uncle Dave. My granny's having just about anything you study here works its way back to we're broke, send $20. I know it. That's what I'm finding out, too. Wind up there every time. I hate to send that to Grandpa, though, because I can just see that gleam in his eye when he reads it. Oh, he'd love to read that the worst way. 
He'd just sit there and might not and drool at the mouth. He'd be so anxious to start blabbing it all over town. Fall all over himself getting to the phone to call up Charlie Redfield. Or That's exactly who he'd call the first thing at. Dad blame Charlie Redfield. And then he'd rush out in the street and head straight for Moe's Moot's barber yeah. shop and tell everybody over there. And on the way over, he'd wave the telegram there and show it to everybody he's seen. Women, children, he wouldn't care who seen it. Then he'd holler it out to the driver on the mail hack so he'd get carried clean over to Cherry Hill, clean into the county seat. For the land sakes, that vomit. You know, he's just been waiting for a chance like this. Why, sure he has, sure. You know, he's sort of justice about this whole expedition idea anyway. Well, I don't recollect him joshness, but I know he must have. Well, he never come right out flat-footed and done it, but he was thinking it anyway. Yes, I bet you we could law sue him for what's been going on that little old mind of his, you know it? I know good and well when we left town last week to go to Tennessee and start digging for the treasure. I know good and well he thought it was just a wild goose chase. Why, of course he did. Of course he did. You could tell that just as plain as anything at all. And so he's just been waiting for something like this to happen to us. Why, sure, sure. Thanks his eye bound you, he's been hoping and praying it would happen. Been laying awake nights wishing it would. That honorary critter. Ain't that, that awful? Honor. That gets me mad all over. Oh, me too. I'll bet you right this minute, right this very minute, he's sitting there in Dick Huddleston's store just waiting for this telegram to come in. Oh, sure. I can see him sitting there now. Ain't even reading the almanac or nothing. Just waiting, that snake in the weeds. Yeah, he'll make a big to-do about sending us the money to Oh, you a fine friend he is. You'd have to town there to watch him do it. And <laughs> make a lot of smart remarks about us. Yeah, and everybody will laugh and giggle and gruff all. That low-down vomit. I hate him, I hate and despise oh, him. Oh, I hate him, too. Who are we talking about? Grandpappy Spears, that skinny old dried-up critter. Oh, him. Man. Yes, sir, him. And after all we did for him, too. Set up with him when he was sick. And we loaned him money once, but we never tried to make a laughing stock out of him about it. Of course we never. Well, sir, I never thought Grandpap would turn again us this Me one. neither. Me After neither. us helping him with his crops the year he was took down with the fever. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. Sure mm. done it. Hey, you just can't trust nobody. Their human nature comes out sooner or later. That no good, underhanded oh, bonnet. Sneaky traitor, wolf in sheep clothing. That double crossing, gopher tooth, goat faced old horse. Yeah, give me that is. pencil, Ed. Oh. I'll write that telegram right it now. Might as well get it over with. Cedric, when we get back to town, don't <laughs> never have nothing to do with that grandpappy spear. No, Bob, I ain't going to. That bonnet will turn again you every time. I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw an elk's tooth with the elk still on it. Um, Granny, is that hard to hold him? Huh? Now, uh, give me our 51 cents. Yeah, yeah, what'd you say in it? I said a penny. What, what? What'd you tell him? Well, Mr. Milford Spears, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. That's our time. You can just keep your dead blame money. See if we can. That's our tell him. Send that right now. Out. I don't agree with him. Granny's there now. I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, after being stranded in Little Rock, Arkansas, the unhappy and unsuccessful treasure hunters finally managed to scrape up enough money for the last leg of their homeward journey. As we look in on the bedraggled remnants of the once hopeful lost treasure expedition, we find Lum, Abner, and Cedric driving along the highway heading for Pine Ridge. Listen. Hey, Cedric! 
be. Watch where you're driving there. Nobody's might die on us into the ditch. Oh, excuse me. Scare us half to death. Now, you keep your mind on your driving. Well, I'm trying to, Mr. Abner, but all I can think about is that poor old pinball machine of mine. Cedric, we hunt. We told you not to bring that up no more now. Well, I just can't help thinking about that poor old pinball machine sitting back there in Little Rock all by itself. Oh, my. Cedric, we've told you a thousand or a hundred times that you might be able to get that back someday. We didn't actually sell it to that feller. We just, well, just sort of left it there for a while at that pawn shop. Yeah, and we give you the pawn shop ticket, too. You still got it, ain't you? Yes, Mama. I got it. I'm, I'm wearing it right next to my heart. Oh. That's right where I'm going to keep it the rest of my life. Well, if you ever get seven dollars together, why, you can send that ticket to Little Rock and get the machine back again, Cedric. Things will never be the same, though, leaving it behind in Little Rock that way. <laughs> I don't know where I'll ever be able to look it in the face again or not. Oh, my goodness, Cedric, we hunt such tall. Look, Cedric, leave us face the facts. We had to raise the money somehow to get home. And that marble machine of yours was the only thing that that pawnbreaker would loan us any money on. Yeah, we had to get home, Cedric. We couldn't just sit there in Little Rock and starvation ourselves to death there. No, Mom, but if you'd have just told me what you's aiming to do, if you'd have just let me went with you to the pawn shop. Well, we know that you'd never in the world part with that machine, so we just had to do it that way. Yes, Mom. But if I could have just talked to that pawnbreaker myself and told him to take good care of it, to be good to it. Be good to it? Oh, me, Cedric, you talk like that was a human being instead of just a batch of wood and tin and glass and stuff. Oh, it was just like a brother to me, my Oh, my oh. brother. Pinball machine for a brother. Say All so. alone in a big city. Swan to the... No friends or nothing. No telling who'll be putting nickels in it. Bound you somebody will even put slugs in it. No, you, Cedric, I wish you'd stop talking about it. That's all we've heard ever since we left Little Rock. You talking about that pinball machine. I bet it says tilt right now. Oh, for the land's sake, son. Yeah, try to get your mind off of that and put it on some other subject, Cedric. Yeah, Cedric. I tell you, read the signs along the road. They're awful interesting. I just love to read them myself. <laughs> Special them kind that sort of broke up into a whole row of signs, you know. Yeah, there's one of them starting on that row of fence posts. Huh? See them? Yeah, yeah, that's the kind. <laughs> Uh, don't hide inside. There's an next one. A dark old cave. Because your whiskers. Uh, won't behave. <laughs> Come on outside. And be the rave. Uh, of all the girls. Both, uh, both wax and waves. Just rub on your face. Uh, Ajax high grade saddle soap. Huh. huh. Oh, that don't rhyme very good, you know. Uh, oh, I, I think that last one was a different kind of a sign, Abner. Must have missed one of them other summers. Yeah, must have. Uh, ain't this fun, Cedric? Mom? I know this. We're getting closer to home. There's a sign there about the hotel in there at the county seat. Yeah, nine miles to Antlers Hotel. Low rate, 20 rooms. 20. Does that mean they got 40 rooms in that hotel alone? No, I don't think so. Well, 20 and 20 is 40, ain't it? Yeah, but I've sold that hotel, and I know good and well there ain't no 40 rooms in it. No. That 20 rooms, 20, is just a fancy way they got to advertise in the hotel, I think. Yeah, just trying to make folks think they got 40 rooms, huh? Well, sort of. Just like that show we seen advertised back there in Hot Springs. You know where they had pictures of all them girls out in front of the show house? Yeah, yeah, I recollect that. They had a sign there that said, 50 girls, 50. It did. Doggy, them girls never looked that old. They sure hold age well, don't they? We wouldn't talk about their age. Huh? There's 50 girls in the show, and then they put another 50 on there in case you never read the first one, I reckon. Hmm. Oh, pinball machine. Now, Cedric, we told you to forget that and read the sign. Go over it, I'll try yeah, now, there's one up ahead. See it, Yonah? What's that say, Cedric? Too far away for me to read it yet. Oh, Cherry Hill Funeral Parlor. When you suffer the loss of a dear one... No, don't it? That must mean me. Huh? I'm suffering the loss of a dear old pinball machine. Oh, land sakes alive. Poor little maiden. Little maiden? Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. That, that was its name. 
It was printed right on the machine there. Last name was Ohio. Ohio? Yes, Bob. That's what it said on there. Made in Ohio. Oh, lonesome thing. Don't know a soul there in Little Rock, neither. Well, of course it don't. Don't know a soul nowhere else, neither, Cedric. Pinball machines ain't humans. They don't know folks. That knowed me, I believe. Knowed you? Oh, Pinball. Oh, that's silly, Cedric. Why, of course it is. From silly. <laughs> it knows you. Well, it does, I think. Least ways, every time I walk up to it, it just seems like it leans towards me, sort of rubs up against me. Well, that's sort of like old cap. Yeah, well, you're always tilting it all the time. That's a reason for that. And when I put a nickel in it and start shooting them balls around, why, the whole thing just seems to light up. Well, natural. That's what it's supposed to do. That's the way them things works. Poor old lots of machine. Well, and you hit misses me something wonderful. Now, doggy Cedric, to hear you talk, why, body'd expect that machine to sneak out of the pawn shop and follow us down the road. I bet it would, too, if it could. Huh? I know I'm just going to pine away about it. Pine away? Now, that app outcaps anything you said yet. Yeah, Cedric. pull yourself together, Cedric. All of us feel bad enough about going back to Pine Ridge empty-handed without no buried treasury. So don't make it no worse for us by all this moaning and groaning over a marble gadget. Yeah, Cedric. Marble gadget, he says. You well, know, that's what it is, Cedric. I tell you, it ain't going to be easy to face the folks at home, Cedric, being the laughing stocks of the whole town. Cedric, anymore. watch out. Oh, my, oh, Get my. Back on the right side of the road there, for goodness sake. Cedric, you ain't paying no more attention to your driving than nothing. Well, how, how can I think about driving at a time like this? I'm so uh, sad. You just got to forget that old thing. Thing, Cedric, and get your mind on something else before you get yourself a nervous breakdown. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm getting one already. If no, you something. ain't neither. I, I think of some other stuff for a change. Think of something happy. Yeah, think about getting home. We ain't so very far from Pine Ridge now. Yeah, think about seeing all the old familiar places again. Yeah, all your old friends, Barrel Eggs Crockett and Whitey Eberts and Gid Kamal and Gomer Bay. Pine Ridge will never be the same again. Oh, my goodness. You'll all just sit around and pine away. I don't believe I'll last out a week myself. Now, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, Cedric. Nobody ever died from a pinball machine. I don't think. No, I'm going to, though. Here's what I want you to put on my tombstone. Put on that say, here lies Cedric Lee Hunt, died of a broke heart. By the land sakes of life. Now I want you to bury that pawn shop ticket with me. Don't get Cedric, now if you don't stop this, you'll have us thinking something like that actually is going to happen to you. Well, it is going to. Oh, Lord. Now listen, Cedric, I've stood all this I can. You've been going on like this ever since we hit the road early this morning. I'm sick and tired of it. You I'm understand? sick and tired of it, too. You ain't going to die no broke heart no more than I am. So just get that idea right out of your head right well, here now. It's the truth, though. I'm beginning to feel the effects of it already. Oh, Fred. Well, I am. For about the last 20 miles now, I've been feeling a sort of a hard pain around my heart, just like something was stabbing me. That's just your imagination, Sandy. Well, that's sure. You got yourself to where you believe anything you say. Now, pull yourself together and stop acting like a half-grown idiot. Why, sure. I tell you, this, this is... I, oh, there it is again. That's the worst I've felt yet. Such imagination in all my days, Cedric. Now, wait a minute. What are you stopping the car for? I just can't go no further. Huh? I'm all dead for fellas. The end has came. Now, listen here, Cedric. We hunt you start up this car and get on oh, home. There it is again. They're getting worse now. You better uh-huh. just lay me down in the back seat and cover me up with that. Lap rope. Oh, I can't stand that much longer. I don't listen. Now, listen here, Cedric. Wait a minute, Abner. He does look sort of pale. Maybe he ain't just imagining this. Huh? Yeah, things like this do happen, you know. Cedric, exactly whereabouts do you feel the pain? Right here, Mr. Lum, right over my heart. Oh, there it is again. Hurts just to touch it. Oh, my goodness, why, poor Cedric. When you Cedric. get back to Pine Ridge, would you fellas write a letter for me? Why, sure, anything at all. Write it to Little Rock and say... Now, wait a minute, Cedric. Now, we'd love to do that the worst way, but a pinball machine can't read no letter. Now, wait a minute, we better humor him. Huh. Sure, we'll write the letter, Cedric. Well, I reckon it'd work out all right at that. Because even though the machine can't read, why, somebody else could read the letter to it. Uh, no, they couldn't do that. Uh, what do you want us to say in this letter to the pinball machine, Cedric? Well, I meant just write it to that fellow in the pawn shop. Oh. Tell him to be kind to the machine and tell him I passed on to my reward with its name on my lips. 
Maiden, no how. No, it is just sad. Tell her, oh, it's getting worse. I can't go on. Oh, my. Abner, better loosen up his shirt there. Give him some air. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Be Here, careful Abner. with him, though. Yeah, I will. I'll oh, help. watch Get out there, Mr. Abner. Say, I wish you'd give my bird whistle to Barrel Edge Crockett and, and give my uh, jackknife. Well, and... I'll be dead blamed. Cedric, here, sit up straight here. I, I can't, Mr. Abner, I'm dying. No, you ain't. You're just being stuck by a safety pin. Safety pin? Yeah, the one you used to pin that dead gum pawn shop to get to your undershirt. Now, sit up and drive us home. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. All right, Doggy Glom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, now that the old fellows are back in Pine Ridge after their unsuccessful lost treasure expedition to Tennessee, they're trying to keep their fellow citizens from learning the true facts of their fiasco in order to keep them from being ridiculed. As we look in on the little community today, we find Cedric talking to Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Why, sure, I'll help you write a letter, Cedric. Uh, who are you writing it to? Oh, to Ernest Macmillan. Well, that's nice. To write a Ernie. Proud you yeah. writing to him. We all ought to write to the soldier boys a heap more than we do, Cedric. There ain't no one thing they enjoy more than getting a letter from home. Yes, Ma. Uh, whereabouts is Ernest at now, do you know? Oh, somewhere's in the Pacific. Somewhere's in the Pacific? Yes, Ma. The Pacific what? Ocean? That's what he said in his letter to me. You mean he's just swimming around out there summer? I don't know. I, I think he's on some island out there, though. Well, he must be, doggies. He couldn't swim and write you a letter at the same time. No, well, I might not sure he's on an island. I believe he mentioned it in his letter. Yeah, well, he'd have to be, Cedric. Near as I can recollect, Ernest weren't much of a swimmer, no ways. Well, uh, come on, let's get your letter wrote. I'll get some paper here for you. Oh, uh, uh, well, I've got the paper already, Mr. Abner. Oh, good. Bought good. it from Mr. Beckley down to the drugstore. Well, it's <laughs> some special kind of paper for writing to soldiers and sailors on. V-mail, it's called. V-mail? Yes, Mom. Hmm. Mr. Beckley says it's the best kind of use when you're writing a letter to a body that's overseas that way. Well, I do know. Uh, what's uh, good about it, Cedric? Oh, I forget now. Mr. Beckley says it goes faster than any other kind. It, it always goes by our plane. It does. He said they give V-mail a, a priority over other kind of mail. Give it a what, Cedric? Priority or priority or something like that. You mean priorities. That's what you mean, Cedric. Yeah. Well, Mr. Beckley says it was safe, too, because they guarantee they'll deliver them. Well, that sounds like a good kind of mail to send, all right. He says it's patriotic, too, because it saves shipping space. Yeah, well, I'm sold on it. Uh, show me that uh, V-mail paper and let's get started, says he. I've got it right here in my pocket. Yeah, let's take a look at it. I that. bought a lot of pieces of it. <laughs> can you just go into stores and buy that V-mail stuff? Yes, Mom. I can show. That's what I've done. Well. Here it is, right there, see? Hmm. Well, I do know. <laughs> That's sort of cute, you know. You write the address up here and then what you want to say down here. Yeah, I can see that. says, uh, write plainly. Very small writing is not suitable. Yes, Mom. I don't believe my kind of writing is suitable, neither. What do you mean, Cedric? Well, I started to write one and... Wait a minute, I'll show it to you here. Yeah. Got it. Here it is. See, I started out good there, but all I could get on there was just dear Ernest. I used up the whole page. Look here. Well, for the land's sake, Cedric, you oughtn't to have wrote so big. Well, it says not to write small. Well, yeah, but they never meant you had to write this big. You ought to at least get dear Ernest all on one line. Look at there, taking you two whole lines just to write Ernest. Well, that's about as small as I can write, though. Mm. Here, give me one of them female things. I'll write it for you, Cedric. Well, that's what I come over here for. <laughs> 
Aunt Lally, see, just tell me what you want to say now, and I'll put it right down here. Well, I, I want to say, dear Ernest, I, I know that for sure. All right, dear. Say it's to write clean, or... Mr. Abner. I'm writing plain as I can. Now, now, what do you want to say? Well, I, I want to tell him what I've been doing. Or... All right. Tell him all about that buried treasure expedition we went on, and how bad it was, and... How awful it turned out and how broke we got. Well, now, wait a minute, Cedric. Me and Lama brother, you wouldn't say that. Mom. See, me and Lama are trying to keep the folks around here from finding out just how that expedition did turn out. Well, they're going to find out, though, ain't they? Well, I reckon so eventual, Cedric. But we're just going to tell them about it a little bit at a time, you know, just sort of let them find it out gradual. That way, why, they can't make such laughing stocks out of us. Oh, Facts is, uh, me and Lama, well, sort of let on like we made a big success out of the expedition. <laughs> you told them that. Well, no, we never come right out flat-footed and told them that, Cedric. But see, when they'd asked us questions about it, why, we just act necessitous and not say hardly nothing at all. Then they'd get to thinking that we was way yonder richer and we was letting on. Well, maybe I ought to sort of start doing that, too, myself. Why, of course you ought to. We got to stick together on this thing. Fact is, we was aiming on calling you up. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, comes along. Well, well, maybe oh. he can help you this email letter. He writes plainer than I do. I'll ask him, Cedric, see if he'll help you on it. Oh, they cut down. The hey, uh, Lom, Cedric here wants to write an oh, no, email. Hello there, Cedric. Howdy, Mr. Long. Uh, Cedric here wants to ride. Well, his Abner, all right, he's working out better than I expected it would. What, Idy? I mean about the expedition. Oh. Folks are sure enough thinking that was a big success. <laughs> you know what's happened? No, what? The Lodge is holding a banquet tomorrow night, and they've asked me to be the main speaker at it. The main speaker? Yes, sir. Well. They want me to talk about my experiences as a big treasure digger upper in far off Tennessee. Well, I do know. <laughs> I know that this is working out good, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I know it would all the time. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, say, uh, Cedric wants you to help him write a V-mail letter to Ernest Macmill along. Well, I won't be able to right now, Cedric. I've got to get busy and work on my speech for tomorrow night. I'm going to study up a good one. All how I worked up from a little poor boy. Uh, Abner, get the phone there. Oh, was that all right? Yeah. I this is going to be the that. best one speech I ever give in my life. I Hello. Do Got him down store in library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Y- yeah, he's here. What? Uh, has he made up his mind about what? Oh, the speech. Yeah, sure. Uh, facts oh, is. He... Uh, wait a minute, Abner. Give me that phone. Huh? Here, let loose of it. Oh. Hello, is that you, Esri? Damn it, what he wanted. Well, about that speech, Esri, I ain't sure yet if I can make it or not. Hmm. Yeah, I know I said I'd let you know this morning, but there's just so many things that's piled up, and I got so many responsibilities now, and one thing and another, that I, I just don't know where I can see my way clear to doing it or not. Are you losing your mind, Long? Yeah, well, I'm still trying to work it out some way, Esri, but I just can't answer yes or no yet. Well, you, you can imagine how busy I am now writing magazine articles on buried treasures and I don't know what all. I never know what he's doing that. Yeah, well, give me till this afternoon, Ezra, and I'll let you know for sure then. Yeah. Oh, that's all right now. You ain't bothering me at all much. Uh-huh. All right. Yep, yeah, fine, Ezra, fine. Yeah. Goodbye. For the land's sakes, Lom, what are you saying all that for? Here you rush in here all excited because they asked you to make a speech, and now you tell them you don't know where you can make it or not. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just a old man Edwards using some more of his psychology. Man, I don't know what it is, but it sounds pretty idiotic to me. What are you going to all the trouble to study up a speech for if you ain't going to give it? <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to give it. Huh? I'm just trying to make a big impress on them, so... See, we're trying to make it look like we're big successes, ain't we? Well, yeah, sure we are, but you're throwing away a chance to do it here. No, I ain't. I'm just making it hard for them to get me. See, the harder it is for them to get me to make a speech, well, the bigger man they'll figure I must be. They will, huh? Oh, sure. They'll appreciate a busy man like me giving up his time to come over and talk to them. Oh. And they'll listen to my speech a lot better, too. Well, yeah, if you 
ever give it to Will, I reckon. Well, don't worry, I will. Well, uh, what magazine article is that you said you was writing on? Well, I ain't actual writing one yet. But I am sort of aiming to do that sometime. Write all about our trip to Tennessee and all. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I can't hardly wait to read it. Say, so who's going to help me write my V-mail letter? Oh, well, I'll help you, Cedric. Uh, Lom's got to get busy on his speech, I reckon. Yeah, I'd rather you fellas wouldn't bother me the rest of the day. Yeah, all right. We won't. We won't. Don't worry. Now, let's see now, Cedric. Let me find that paper here. See how far did we get now. We got way down to dear Ernest. Yeah, that's right. Know that's that. right. Yeah, well, let's see now. Mr. Chairman, Chairman and ladies and gentlemen. Huh? I'm just practicing. Oh, excuse me. Let's see now. This sea of turned-up faces before me tonight strikes a tender chord on the harp strings of memory. Why don't you tell Ernest about your work over at the war plant, Cedric? I stand before you tonight a perfect example of the self-made man. How does that sound, Abner? Huh. Oh, all right. right. Little would anyone realize as they gaze upon me now that I was once upon a time nothing but a kid of a boy. Thank you. Poor but honest. He a boy that had to walk 11 miles to school every morning. Barfoot. Uh-oh, he's on that. Again. Through six foot of snow. Tom, I don't believe the lodge members want to hear all that junk again. They want to hear about the expedition. Abner, I've give way on them more speeches than you have, so I know what I'm doing. And get the phone there and don't bother. All right, all right, all right. Although I had to do my sums on the back of an old shovel, I was Hello, the hardest one in the class. Hello, got him down the door, my bird. Have to see body doing the talking. Oh. Huh? Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. All right, I'll tell him, Ezri. Not at all. Goodbye. Ezri? Yeah. Is that Ezri sea trunk again? Yeah. Sure, getting anxious, ain't he? What did he say? Well, he said the committee has voted to do you a big favor, Long. Sounds good. What's the favor? Well, they said as long as you were so busy that they've canceled you and they got Charlie Redfield to make the speech instead. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. All right, Doggy Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner have succeeded in making their fellow citizens think that the hapless treasure expedition to Tennessee was a profitable venture. Their only hope of backing up this pretension is that their man in Tennessee will actually dig up some treasure and start sending it to them. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot down store and library wondering why they've heard nothing from their partner in Tennessee. Come in. Uh Oh, come in, Abner. Never paid no attention to who it was. Was there any mail? No, not a thing. Granny, I can't understand that. You sure Dick looked good? Yeah, yeah. Facts is that uh, the mail hack had just came in, and I stood there and watched him go through the whole shooting match, and there weren't a thing for us long. believe I'm beginning to get a little worried. Worried? Yeah. We ought to have heard something from that fellow over there in Tennessee by now. Oh. He surely had time to dig down to the treasury by this time. Dog, he could even dig a well by this time. Why, well, sure. I grant his wait a minute. Don't reckon Cedric could have got the letter, do you? Well, he might have now. He's president of the company. Yeah, maybe I better call him up. If I'm a millionaire, I grant his, I'm anxious to know about it. Oh, me too, me too. Yeah. If I was having my druthers, I don't know of everything. I'd rather be in a rich millionaire. That'd be my favorite oh, right. thing. Oh, be the finest thing at all. Ain't no doubts about it. Hello? Miss Wee, huh? Uh, is Cedric there, please, Ma? Oh, yes. Well, I believe you better wake him up. This is sort of important. Yes, Ma. All right, I'll hold it. Cedric's asleep, huh? Yeah. I believe that boy's taking advantage of having that night job over there at the defense plant. 
tries to sleep all the time. Well, he generally don't get up till after this time of day, Lum. It ain't but about ten o'clock, and he works till five o'clock of a morning. I don't see how he does it. I don't. My granny's, when that sun comes up of a morning, I've got to get up. Just can't stand to lay around in bed after about six o'clock. Just Maybe. roll and talk. Yeah. Part of that is, except in the wintertime. On a good cool morning, I don't like to stir around much till Elizabeth gets up and gets a far going. Sort of take the chill off the room. Uh-huh. All of us are feared I'll get the pneumonias in the cold room. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. Feller don't want to take chances with me. Uh, hello, Cedric? Cedric? Cedric, don't keep saying hello. Oh, this is Lum. Hello, Cedric. Cedric, are you listening? Cedric. Hello. You don't appear to be on the phone no more. Uh, hello? Oh. Ms. Wee, huh? Oh, it is. Well, wake him up, please, Mom, and stay there and keep him awake till I get done talking to him. All right, thank you. And this boy stood right there at the phone and went sound asleep again. <laughs> Hello, Cedric. Are you awake now? Well, quit mumbling and talk up to where I can hear you. This is important. Uh, it's about the buried treasury. Yeah. No, he ain't found it that I know of. What I want to ask you, you ain't got no hearing from that fellow over in Tennessee, have you? I feared you hadn't. He might have known Cedric hadn't heard nothing. Well, listen, Cedric, you better get on over here. We got to hold a meeting. Well, you can sleep some other time. No, we ain't neither. You're the president of the company, and you have to preside on all them meetings. Yeah, all right, quick as you can. All right, don't go back to sleep now. Well, go douse your head in a bucket of cold water. Yeah, do that before you start dressing so you don't fall asleep before you get done. All right. Goodbye. Thank you, Stitcher boy. He's coming over, huh? Yeah, I said he would. Well, what are we going to hold a meeting about, Long? Well, I just got to thinking there, Abner. I believe all three of us ought to be bored for the temple. Huh? How anybody as smart as I am. Or we air could do anything like that. I don't know. I do anything like what? I do not know. Why go over into a fern state like Tennessee, meet up with some feller we never had saw before, and give him a map showing where there's a buried treasure worth millions and thousands of dollars? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? How do we know that feller's honest? Huh? How do we know whether he'll send us our half of what he digs up? Well, he sure appeared to be an awful honest fella. Oh, yeah. He was all sugar and cream when we was talking to him. So nice he couldn't hardly stand himself. i never seen such a put on. Put on? Why, sure. He was a sheep in wolf clothes, that's what he was. Hmm. More than likely, he'd been looking for that treasure for years and couldn't find it. So natural, when he meets some fellas that's got a map showing right where it's at, he's going to be nice to them. Just so he can get in on the deal. Oh, because I never had thought of it that way. Well, that's what we get for having a feller like Cedric for the president of our company. Instead of somebody like me that stops and figures all them things out before he makes a deal. Did you figure all that out? You just sat there and heard me explain it to you, didn't you? I mean, while we was over there before we made the deal. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did. Must have. Sure. Quick as I am on such matters as that, I must have. Well, why didn't you mention all that to me and Cedric before we made the deal then? Uh, just let it go, Abner. Huh? Nothing we can do about it now. The deal's done made, thanks to our fine president, Mr. Weehunt. Well, now, I know Cedric never would have agreed to letting that feller dig the treasure up on the shares that way long if you just spoke up. Abner, I said just let it go. Hesh up about it. It's done over. It's too late now to do anything. Yeah, but looks to me like if you know it all the time... Abner, I said forget about it. Ain't no use to cry over spilt milk. I never spilt no milk. I never said you did. And I ain't crying. I never said you was. Well, what are you telling me not to be crying over some milk I spilt when I never spilt none? I ain't crying. I for. weren't talking about you. What I mean was... Who was spilled it then? Nobody. Hmm. Just turned over by itself. Uh, who's crying? Oh, for goodness sake. Well, I don't as long as somebody's crying, something must be the matter with them. If somebody was crying, something would be the matter with them. But what if I'm... somebody's in... jumped on some poor little young'uns, we ought to help them out, Long. Well, sure. If somebody jumped on a little that young'un... That's it. Who is it? I dog is I'll clinch with him. I'll fist fight him. Who is I dog is I'll... Abner, for goodness sake, calm yourself well, down. Who is I'm it? talking about the fellow over there in Tennessee that we left to dig up the treasury. You mean he jumped on some poor little young'un and no, beat him up? No, no, he ain't jumped on some poor little young'un. 
what I meant. How do we know that he's going to send us our part of the treasury? How do we know he's going to send us our part of the treasury? Yeah, how do we know he's honest? All I can say is if he's been beating up little children, I wouldn't trust him no further than I could drop kick I am, well, well, no, sir. Say he ain't been beating up on little children. Say the little children are whipping him. Huh? Still, how do we know he's honest? How do we know he'll send us our part of the treasury? Well, he said he would. Said he'd send us half of all he dug up. Oh, sure, he said he would. The way he talks, he's awful honest. But what if he dug four diamond necklaces up and just give us one of them? Just give us one of them? Sure, kept three for himself and just give us one. Well, that wouldn't be honest. He'd owe us to see. Dug up four of them and we're supposed to split 50-50. Half of four is... uh... Take two for himself and give us two. That's right, Doggy. You're right. That's just the way it figured out. Two for us and two for him. And he only give us one. That feller's a crook for him. That's what I say. How do we yes, know that? Yes, sir. He cheated us out of one necklace, sir. Or unless my figures are wrong, you see, half of four is... Half a... of four is two. That, Doggy, you're right. That's just the way it comes out here with this pencil and paper. Two, that's the answer. That ornery low-down snake in the weeds. What kind of necklace was it? A diamond, you say? Well, I just said diamonds. They might How much been... is a diamond necklace worth, Mom? Well, it sort of depends, I reckon. Some of them might be worth $20,000. Some of them might... $20,000? Why, that low-down crook, he's on honest. You know what, Lom? That feller's a cheat. Well, I never said he actually taken the diamond necklace. I now, just wait a minute, he... Lom. Don't start trying to take up for him. I don't care if he is a friend of yours. I ain't going to stand back there. He here. ain't no friend of mine. Well, he must be if you're going to stand back and let him cheat me and Cedric out of $20,000 cold cash. I ain't letting him cheat you and Cedric or nobody else out of no $20,000. Where's that other diamond necklace in? What other diamond necklace? The one you and him is hiding from me and Cedric. We ain't hiding no necklaces I from this you. Edwards, I'd be ashamed of myself. Ashamed of myself if I was you. After as good of friends as me and you has always been, and you let Listen, that Abner, fella... I ain't cheating you out of nothing, and I ain't cheating Cedric out of nothing. Don't get me mixed up in this thing. Hmm. Huh. What do you mean, hmm? Huh. Just plain, hmm. Huh. That's what I mean. For goodness sakes. Look at yourself. Swelled up there like a pies and pup. Well, who wouldn't be swelled up? Fella beat you out of $20,000. Uh, I know this. Wait a minute. There comes somebody I can trust. My true friend. Who? Cedric. That's who. Cedric Weehunt. A true, honest man, if ever I seen one. Oh, him. Come on in, Cedric, old pal. I'm proud to see you. Yes, well, howdy, Mr. Abner. Howdy, Mr. Lum. Hello, Cedric. What's that box you're carrying there? All right, doggies, I'm proud you come in, Cedric. Me and you has been cheated. Been cheated? Yes, sir. We have been cheated out of some money. Money? Yes, sir. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> We're rich now. Rich? What do you mean, rich, Cedric? Well, look at this box that just come in down there at the post office for Mr. Abner. For me, Cedric? What is it, Cedric? Well, I don't know just what it is, but look there, it's from Tennessee. So it must be a whole box of buried treasure that feller's dug up for us. From Tennessee, I know you. Well, I sure it is. I grannies, we're rich, <laughs> fellas, we're rich. Well, I do know <laughs> I know it, I know it. Long Edward, you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to sit here and tell me that feller was on on us. I know that if I ever seen an honest man in my life, he's it. He is it. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. All right, no, Miss Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, great excitement was created yesterday when a package arrived for Mr. A. Peabody from Tennessee. Certain now that their treasure expedition was finally paying off, the old fellows eagerly examined the contents of the package. And the object which intrigued them most was a small iron chest, tightly locked, the key to which was missing. 
As we look in on the little community today, we find Lemon Abner in the Jotham Down store and library, still searching for the key. The... Well, that key must be in the package somewhere, there, Abner. Yeah, you wouldn't think a fella would send a little iron chest like that without sending the key along with it, surely. I just hope we never lost the key when we opened this package up last night. Yeah, I hope so, too. Because I know I'm just going to plumb die a cue, Rosters, if I don't find out what's in that little iron box pretty quick. Long. Oh, me too. I'm just busting to know what's in it. Because <laughs> ain't no doubt that whatever's in there is the most valuable thing in the, in the stuff he sent us. Oh, sure. Fact is, I believe it's the only thing in there that's much good. As far as I can tell, the rest of the stuff in that package ain't worth a whole lot long. Oh, yes, it is, Abner. You just don't understand much about buried treasuries, all. Well, I don't understand most of that junk in there. I know that. Anything that's buried is good. Just recollect that. It is, huh? Yeah, lots of that stuff in there is worth a lot of money just because it's so old. I bound you some of it's a thousands of years old. Well, I don't Maybe see how that'd make it worth anything, long. Whenever something gets old around our place, while we throw it away, get something new. That's, That's what we're looking what for. what I say, just what I was talking about. You just don't know nothing about old treasuries and antiques and stuff like that. I ain't got time now to explain it to you, neither. Well, I expected to find some diamond necklaces in the package and gold wristwatches and fountain pens. I can understand things like that. Yeah, well, more than likely that part of the treasure's in the iron box there. That little box? Yeah. What we got to do now is find the key for it. Well, uh, maybe, Long, we could just sort of break it open. Well, I sort of hate to do that, Emma. It might break some of the diamonds in it or something. Yeah, it'd be break a thing. Break them on it half mm. in two. Oh, no, wouldn't want to ruin nothing like that. No, no. Maybe we better just write to Mr. Olney and ask him if he sent the key. Write to who? Mr. Olney. The fellow in Tennessee that's digging up all the buried treasure for us. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That is his name. <laughs> I keep wanting to call him Mr. Nashville. <laughs> Mr. Nashville? Yeah, I reckon I keep getting it mixed up because they're both in Tennessee, you know. Well, that's more both likely. in Tennessee? Well, that's logical. Of course, now, Lom, I don't believe we could wait till we get a letter back from Mr. Ollie before we open that box, old dog, because that'd take three or four days. Yeah, I know it would. Well, let's look through the package one more time. That long, we've done been through all them packages a dozen or more times. I know, but this time we look extra good. I've done look extra good. Well, we look uh, extra, extra good. Oh. Examine every article in there. The key must be in there somewhere. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'd still love to just bust that arm box open and get my hands into them diamond rings for a few well, minutes. Well, so. we ain't going to do that, so just get that out of here, right out of your head. All right, I ain't. Still enough to do it, though, and all that. Let's see here now. Here are them old cooking pans. I know the key ain't in them. No, now, well, now, there's something right there. Them right cooking they're wrapped up so they won't rattle. Yeah, but uh, I don't see how they can be worth nothing. No, Lom, look at the bottoms of them sticking out of the papers there. See how black it is? How bent the handles on them is? We got better pans than that right here in the store for 40 cents. Well, that ain't the idea, though, Abner. What makes them valuable is because somebody famous might have used them once upon a time. Somebody famous? Yeah, might have been a king or Napoleon or Richard the Lion Faced or King Arthur and the Knights of the Roundhouse. Yeah, whoever it was, they weren't very good cooks, I'll say that for them. Just look how they burnt the bottom of them pans. Oh, well, that can be scraped off. Uh, of course, you don't want to scrape it off, really, because that's what makes them good. Being burnt? Yeah. That dog is I can get Elizabeth to burn every pan we got in the store yeah. if it's going to raise the price of many. There's that old sword there. Now, you know good and well that's valuable. That old thing there? Why, sure. Christopher Columbus might have bring that very sword over to this country itself. No telling how much that thing's worth now. No, oh, I don't believe it could be worth so very much long. I recollect Papa had one something like that, but it weren't worth much, I don't think. Papa thought it was, but nobody else did, I know of. Oh, yeah, he would. He's a nice old fellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. How is your Papa these days? I ain't heard you mention him in a long time. Oh, he's all right, I reckon. But you know him, he just hates to write. But he can't write, can he? Yeah, he can write all right if you can get him to do it. We ain't had a hearing from him, oh, Lomi. Not since Christmas, I don't believe. Then all he said was just Merry Christmas. 
Wouldn't even write out the full word Christmas, huh? No, no, not Papa. No, sir. E. Bob wouldn't do it. Granny, he must be getting up in years. Oh, yeah. yeah. I reckon he's old. Close to his 90s, anyway. Oh, Still yeah. spry as anything at all, old. Oh, he was a goer, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that old man is a card. A caution. That old Bess used to say it when Papa's time come, he'd have to build his coffin in the shape of a letter L so as he could set up in it. <laughs> Set up in it. Yeah. Bess said Papa was the kind of fella that wouldn't even lay down after he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just about hits him. Oh, yeah. You know, I still wish that when we went on that expedition, we could have drifted clean to the far side of Tennessee there and visited with him a day or two. Yeah, it would have been nice, all right. Yeah, I'd love to do Just surprised him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was like I told you, we just never had the gas coupons for it. Or the time neither one for it, that goes. Oh, no, no, we can... Uh, Clean across the state there. Yeah, well, here, let's get back to this treasure here and find that dead gum key we're going to. I can't wait much longer. Yeah, it's to bound to be in here summers, Abner. You don't reckon that there Mr. Olney feller would have kept that key on a purpose, do you, Long? Kept it? Yeah. What would he have did that for? Well, I don't know. Maybe he figured the key in with his half of the treasury some way. You know, our agreement with him was that he could keep half of anything he dug up. Yeah, I know, but there wouldn't be no sense in him doing a thing like that. It might have even been a gold key oh, with diamonds no. in it and a, a pearl handle or something No, it's like just that. been misplaced is all. We'll find it here, Summers. We'll hash up for five minutes and help me look through this stuff. Dog, when we start getting rich off of this junk, I believe I'll get me a pearl handle key, hang it right on my watch chain there. Here's this little box full of all different kinds of shoe buttons, but I've looked through it a dozen times. I know the key ain't in here. Yeah, now, there's another thing. Now, what's valuable about a box of old shoe buttons like that, Long? Abner, stop asking questions. You can get me to thinking this stuff ain't worth nothing, too. Well, is it? Well, sure it is. Don't forget all this was buried hundreds of years ago, and that makes it worth something right there. It does, huh? Yeah, it weren't valuable in the first place. Nobody would ever went to all the trouble to bury it. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Never had thought about it just that way, but you're right, I reckon. Of course I am. Now, there's that batch of spoons there. Souvenir spoons. I know the key ain't with them. No, it's, now, I noticed them spoons. Now, they look like they'd be worth something. Oh, like. yeah, you can just tell by looking at them. They're solid silver plated. Yeah, I noticed one of them there is advertising a Columbia expedition. But that weren't hundreds of years ago, was it, Long? No. Well, how could they get that in the buried treasure, then? Well, they just... Hmm, that's right, in. Well, I'm sure it is. It was just some advance advertising they got out on the exposition. You know, they plan them things a long ways ahead. They do, huh? Oh, yeah. They sure Not... got that and started early. Stop asking so many questions and help me hunt here. All right. I just hope whatever's in that iron box is worth all this trouble we're going to, though. Well, don't worry. It will be. I know it will. Uh, well, maybe we ought to bust it open and see before we go any further. No, we yet. ain't going to do that and spile the box. Well, couldn't we break it open just a little bit? No, not even a little bit. If I happen to drop it on the floor by accident and it'd break open, why, that wouldn't be our fault, would it? Now, just get that idea out of your head and get to work here. All right, but... That iron box is filled with old shoe buttons. I ain't going to have no more to do with no treasure expedition. Hmm, 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 hmm. Here's something I never saw in here before. Huh? It was stuck clean over to one side of here. Looky there. Hmm, what is that? Looks like a piece of cardboard. It's a picture of somebody. A picture? He's got a big belt on. It looks like it's got jewels stuck in it. Must be some old king. Jewels stuck in Let me see that thing. Wait a minute. I'm trying to read the name down at the bottom here. Part of it's tore away something Mel Sullivan, or Solomon. Can't quite make it out. Uh, what what do you say, Solomon? No. Crazy, I bound you, that's it. Solomon, yeah. Huh? Yeah, this here's a picture of King Solomon. You've heard of him, ain't you? Yeah, sure. I reckon this stuff belongs to him. Might have. Granny, look at that handsome handlebar mustache he's sporting. Yeah, let me see the picture. I'm holding it down low. I'm oh. standing on my tip. Oh, excuse me. Here. See that belt with the jewels in it? Hmm. Yeah, I reckon what he's got his fists up like that for... Looks like he's fixing to fist fight somebody. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's mad. You can tell that by looking at him. Well, maybe he's just one of them fellas who hates to have his picture took. Might be. Grandpappy Spears is the same one. Oh, yeah, he'll fight you every time. Of course, now, I don't blame this fella Solomon here for being mad, though. They never even let him get dressed before they take his picture. He's standing there in his long underwear. Yeah, I noticed that, too. What, he's got a bell on to hold that up for her. Excuse me. 
Yeah, he mixed up or somebody. I think a king like him would have... Maybe he thought he'd put in his pants on, just never got them on. Well, he missed it, I'll tell him that. He is absent-minded. <laughs> <laughs> you think a king like him would have had a lot of guards turn around, keep folks from sneaking up and go him that way? Now, doggies, he ought to have guards if he's that absent-minded. I'll say that for him. But he'd try to fist fight the way he's going out at there. He'd better have a lot of guards around him. Look the way he's holding up his arm. <laughs> look there, sort of like this. So that I could sneak look, in there. Look out, Abner. You're knocking that box off in the car. Uh-oh. James, now you've did it. Hey, Lump, look there. It broke off, my lump. Look what's rolling out of it there. Money's. Hundreds of money. Oh, my right goodness. Here coins. Them's the coins. Huh? Hi, Granny Dad. From now on, we're going to live on easy street. Street nothing. We're going to live in a house, a palace, the biggest one we can find. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. All right, Dolby Glom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner failed to find the key to the small iron chest in the package from Tennessee, but they managed to break the box open and were elated to find it chock full of old coins. Lum has gone to the county seat to start spending their new wealth, and as we look in on the little community today, we find Abner and Cedric in the Jotham Down store library looking through the mail order catalog. This. Boy, well, that's what I want right there. Right, right where it is. Right there, one of them things, right there. You mean a guitar? Yes, ma'am, exactly what I want. Why, Cedric, you can't play no guitar. Well, I don't know where I can or not. I never did try it. Well, you have enough trouble just trying to blow that ten-cent ten bird whistle of yours. Well, you don't have to blow a guitar. Oh, I know you don't, Cedric, but I mean whatever you do to a guitar, you can't do it. Well, with that, it don't matter, though. Huh? I don't need to know how to play it because it's like a trick. Like a tree. This one. That's what it says. See it right there, it says. Let me see. Says it. Well, right get there. your head out of the way. I can't read nothing. You've been over there. Well, I'll be a polka dotted possum. A lecatric guitar. What is this world coming it, to? See, it's got a cord on it, so all you have to do is just plug it in and away it goes. Just play it itself, huh? Yeah, I'm <laughs> so. No, because I believe I'll get one of them things myself and put a little grandpappy spirit with it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing at? Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll invite him and Aunt Charity over to the place some night, and I'll just be sitting there sort of with this guitar in my lap, you know, and I'll hide the card so he can't see it, and then all of a sudden I'll just turn it on, act like I'm actually doing the playing. <laughs> Old Grandpap's eyes will bug out like a tromped on toad crawl. <laughs> Boy, that'll be a good <laughs> Oh, I can't hardly Boy. wait. Well, let old Varmint be mad. He thinks he's the only feller in town that's got music talents. Him and that player Pianer his. Uh, I believe I'll bring my electric guitar over to your place that night and play a duet with you. That, that ought to make Grandpap just twice as mad. Yeah, that's a good idea. There'll be two it. of us. Er, wait a minute, though. I don't know whether that'll work out or not. See, they just one socket up there in the ceiling there in the parlor, so we couldn't plug in more than one guitar in there at a time. Well, couldn't we get one of them doubled up sockets, sort of? Yeah, I reckon we could. Of course, it's going to be awful hard disguising two cords hanging down from the ceiling, though. Facts is, it's going to be hard enough with just one cord. That grandpap, he's liable to spot that the first thing when he comes in the room. Well, maybe you could wrap red, white, and blue streamers around it and sort of decorate it up, sort of. Oh, no, no, that'd make him more curious than ever. He'd start asking too many questions. Oh, I wish I could figure out some way to make it invisible. That's what it'd work. Oh, I I know. Why don't you just rub some invisible ink on the cord? That's a good idea, Cedric. Uh, Look through the waste book there and see if they sell invisible ink in there. Yes, Mom. I'd like to get a bottle of that for myself, too. Oh, good. I wish Lom would have let me went into the county seat today instead of him. I can't hardly wait to start spending all this money we're getting out of that buried treasure. (laughs) I 
don't know why he always has to be the one to get to do everything first. You know, visible. You know, visible. How do you spell that, Mr. Edmund? Why, just like it sounds, I reckon, Cedric, uh, in a I-N-N-A, er, oh, E-R, er, I, er, uh, Is it K-Silent? If there's one in there, Ted, I believe, no, Cedric. No, K-Silent in some words. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about it, Cedric. When you find it there in a book, well, you can see how it's spelled. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's the matter with it? It's the chicken there. Oh, no. Uh, you know, it's a boy, you know, it's a boy. Just hope old Ron don't spend all the money we got out of that orange box. That's what I hope. Well, he couldn't spend all that in one blow, could he? There uh, have been a million or a thousand dollars worth of money in there. Yeah, but you know that long when he gets on a buying spree. And I could tell if he had that spending look in his eye when he left out of here this morning. You know, this is a boy. That lum, he gets a little money in his pocket, he just goes plum hog wild. They ain't got no sense at all when it comes to finance matters. Not Maybe it's spelled with an E. Or maybe the K ain't solid after all. That lum just lets money run through his fingers like it was a batch of water. Never seen nothing like it in my life. Never. Believe I'll look under black ink and work back from there. That lum is the recklessest one human I ever know. Why, he's liable to buy out the whole county seat. Dog is all that went with him, watched over him. He ain't servitive at all. He'll come back here loaded down with the most useless, idiotic bunch of junk you ever seen. He'll do it sure as he was. Just wasting your breath, Mr. Abner. I ain't hearing a word you're saying, because no, I'm sir. looking for that invisible ink. He ain't uh, Better try red ink. He just don't know enough to buy sensible stuff like electric guitar. Why no invisible ink in here nowhere? Well, just forget that for now, Cedric, and turn over to the part there where the order blanks is at. We'll send in for them guitars right here and now. Well, reckon we can afford them, though. Uh-huh. According to the wish book, them things cost about $130 a piece. Well, what's $130 to us, Cedric? Can't you recollect we're a thousandaires now? Well, but Mr. Lum taking all them coins with him never left us none at all. Yeah, I know he did. We'll order by COD and then... By the time the guitars get here, why, there'll be another box of buried treasure from that fellow in Tennessee, and we'll be all right. Oh, is he going to send another box of treasure? Why, sure. More likely send one every week, I reckon. Just fast he can dig the stuff up, he'll send it to us. Well, let's start ordering then. I never know that some other stuff in there I want to pick out. Yeah, well, just pick out anything you want. Find the order blanks first there, though. Well, I've done got them right here, there, Mr. Oh, good, good. Right there. That's what that is right there, that thing right there. Just fill that in. The music geniuses around here in no time at all, say this boy. Let's see now. Right. the Macmillan boys. What does that say there? Write or print name here. Man, that's easy. Name. N-A-M-E. Name. Er, no. More like they mean my name. Okay, I can spell that too. They ain't fooling me. Abner Peabody. A-B-N. A-B-N. E-R. Abner. He's dressed Pine Ridge. Hey, Mr. Abner, what are you writing that place right there? Where, Cedric? Right there where it says, please do not write in this space. No, dog, as I don't know. I've been wondering that myself for a long time. Every time I pick up one of these blanks, I wonder that same thing. Oh, I know what I asked Papa one time. He never knowed neither. Well, I believe the best thing to do is just ignore it, Cedric. Yeah. Don't put nothing in there at all. You no, just leave it blank. Hmm. We'll show them they ain't going to make no idiots out of us. Well, what do we put down next now? Well, I see number of articles in catalog. Does that mean we've got to count up all the articles, is not it? Oh, no, he tickles got a number of stones, has he? Here, I shall we just turn back here to where them guitars are out here. Yeah, I want to look at them again anyway. Hello? Yeah, here we are, right here, right here. See there, Cedric? Number 12K247W. Now, that's for them there high volume guitar. Of course, they got Spanish guitars here, too. Which do you want, Cedric, the high volume or the Spanish? Oh, spinach, I reckon, don't make much difference. Mm. I can't understand neither one of them, no way. Uh, uh, high volume, I'll put that number down here right there. Uh, what, what's next now? Quantity, these are. Well, we want good high-class quantity, natural. Mm. I'll just write down the best here. <laughs> sure, we're rich. Name of Article Wanted. Two high volume guitars, black effects. Color. What color you want, Cedric? Oh, I don't know. Red, I reckon. That's my favorite color. Right. Special soda pop. One red. See, I'll take a yellow. One yellow. Now, next is size. Color. 
What size guitar do you take, Cedric? Oh, I just don't know. I've never been measured up for one of them. What, what size do they come in? Oh, let me see, let me see. I don't believe it's there. Reckon you want a big one, though. You're a pretty big oh, boy. Yeah, I want a whopper. Tell them I weigh 195 pounds. Yeah, put that down. One to fit 195 pounds, fella. One big one. Medium, I'll put there for me. I believe I'll take about a medium. I believe you'll take a short. Yeah, put a medium short in. I want to get a good fit if I can. What else do you put down there? Yeah, I believe that's all set in the price. Here, wait a minute, Toll. Space for ordering men and youth clothing. Does that mean we got to buy a suit before we can get a guitar? Oh, I don't believe it does. Sure, we got a baseball bat once with the suit. Yeah, not at this price, I don't believe Would, it. We'd have to get a Hawaiian suit, a grass skirt and stuff. No, we'll just skip that, Ted. Here now, let me get that in the envelope there. Now, you rush right on over to Dick Cuddleson's store and get a stamp for it and get that thing in the mail as quick as you can, Yes, Cedric. well, I'll rush like crazy. Well, that's the thing to do. <laughs> Hurry up now. I'm just plum tickled to death about it. believe that was your ring, Mr. Abbott. Ah, here it is. I'll get it, Cedric. You just get that order blank in the mail. You're going well. So long. So long. <laughs> Hello. Jot him down to the library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Oh, what is it, Elizabeth? You done what? Why, sure. Yeah, that's all right. Order all the stuff you want to out of the wish book. I don't care. Oh, we're rich now. A new bread safe. Well, that's nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, wait a minute, Elizabeth. Uh, you can tell me what you ordered some other time. I see Lum coming up out there, and I want to talk to him. Yeah, all right. Hello, Abner. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm all right. On the phone. Yeah, goodbye. I know, Miss Lum, you got back a heap quicker than I allowed you would. Hurry up and tell me what old you buy. I'd rather not even discuss that, Abner. Uh-huh. Let me sit down. I'm war to a frazzle. War to a frazzle. What, what's the matter? I never bought nothing. You never? I never. D- didn't they have nothing expensive enough for rich folks to buy in there? Sure. Couldn't have bought it even if it'd been some little old two-for-a-nickel thing. Well, here, wait a minute. You never went and lost all the money we got out of that orange box, did you? That money ain't worth the stamp that brung it. Huh? That weren't nothing but a batch of old-timey Chinese coins that ain't worth nothing. Chinese coins? Ain't worth nothing? Oh, my goodness. And Cedric's done sent an order into the mail order house to get two electric guitars. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. All right, no big lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the old fellow's dreams of wealth came crashing down yesterday when Lum, on his buying trip to the county seat, discovered that the money in the iron chest from Tennessee was nothing but a bunch of worthless old Chinese coins. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in the jot em down store and library. Abner is talking on the telephone. Uh, how's that now, Tom? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we'd like to make a donate, Tom, but... Huh? Oh, sure, yeah, we got plenty of money, it ain't that, but... Uh, uh, well, just a minute here, I'll let you talk to Lom. He handles all that. Here, Lom, take a receiver. Well, wh- what's it all about? Tom Foster says he wants us to make a donate to help him build a new roof on the church. And I don't know what to tell him. Well, I don't know what to tell him neither. We ain't got no money, I know that. I know, but everybody in town thinks we have. They think we're richer than anybody at all since we got that package of buried treasure the other day. Yeah, I wish now we'd kept still about that. We found out if it was worth anything or not. Yeah, well, here, you better talk to Tom. We can't keep him waiting. All right, but I don't know what to say. Well, say anything to him. Hello, Tom. This is Lum. I told him it was Tom. 
Oh, just only tolerably, Tom. Why, yeah, Abner told me what to donate was for, and we'd love to go in on it the worst way, but... Well, you see, Tom, uh... Well, for one thing... Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, we're rich, all right, but... Well, most of our wealth is sort of tied down. Yeah, all our liabilities is froze up. So, we got better close the window. Well, as soon as they get unfroze, I'll let you know. Maybe I ought to build a fire in the stove, too. Well, I'm sorry we can't help you out now, Tom, but you check with us a little later on. I'm sure they're wrong about that. It's yeah. Freezing now. Uh huh. All right, Tom. Goodbye. Granny, he'd to turn him down. Special when we're so rich. Er, no, that's right. We ain't, are we? No. Not unless we go to China, we ain't, because all we got's a batch of old Chinese money. Can't afford to go there. No. Uh, Lum, you said the other day that all that other old junk in the package was awful valuable. Can't we sell some of that and get rich? No, I sort of doubt it. I don't believe that stuff's worse as much as I figured it was. You don't, huh? No, them cooking pans, for instance. I'm beginning to think that maybe they never actually belonged to no king after all. Or a queen, neither one, for that goes. Not even a little bitty prince? Not even a skullduggery maid. Hmm. Facts is, now that I think about it, I don't believe no king or queen would do their own cooking no way. More than likely, hard done. Yeah, yeah, I reckon they would. Get hard help. Yeah, sure. Queen will have enough to do just to keep that castle swept out good. Yeah. Feared we couldn't get much out of the rest of that trash we got out of the buried treasure, neither. No. Doggies. I thought surely I was going to get to be a millionaire for once. I'd just like to know what Mr. Olney got out of his half of the treasury. I bound you it weren't no box of old shoe buttons and stuff like that. I knowed we oughtn't to trust him. Knowed it from the start. Uh, there he is, clean over in Tennessee with our treasury map. He knows we ain't got no way of checking up on him when he divides it. That snake in the weed. Think I'll write him a letter and just tell him if he digs up another batch of treasury, he better watch himself when he divides it. Watch himself? Yes, sir. Well, it wouldn't do no good to have him do the watching, because he won't be no more honest than himself was of long. Or, I mean, uh, it's... Dogus, what am I trying to say here? Wish we never went in on this dead gum treasury expedition in the first place. All it's did is just cost us money. We still owe Cedric for the money we borrowed from him to buy the treasury map from Squire Skin. Yeah, if we could just get enough money out of the treasury company some way to break even, I'd be satisfied. Oh, me too, me too. Of course, now, Lon, they might be some better treasure come in later on. See, maybe the cheap stuff is buried on top, and you have to dig down deeper to get them diamond necklaces and pearl wristwatches and all that stuff. Oh, no, I doubt it. I about give up on that. Well, thing. it might be. Maybe they bury treasure that away to unencourage folks from digging it up. They just figure that folks will come to that cheap stuff on top and quit digging right there. Mm, might be. I don't hold out much hopes for it, though, Abner. Yeah, I reckon the best thing to do is just write this off to profits and loss. Er, loss and loss. Ain't no profits to it. No. No, I just wish we hadn't uh, got the whole town to thinking we were so uncommonly rich off of that treasure, though. That's what I would Yeah, do. that was a mistake, all right. Man, it's going to cause us a lot of embarrassing times, too, I can tell you that. Oh, everybody's trying to borrow money off of me, and I ain't got no money. I have to turn them down, and they don't like me for it. I don't believe i got a friend left in town. One thing I like about it, though, folks are speaking to me nowadays that never did speak to me before. Oh, yeah, everybody's oh, nice as pie. Oh, be nice well, enough. No, no. They're mercenaries, that's what they are. Maybe yeah. we ought to come right out flat-footed and tell him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes old Squire Skimp up out there. Oh, Squire yeah, Skimp. coming right Stranger there on the floor. Never saw him in days. Now, there's one fellow I just leave not see right now. He's bound to ask all about the treasury. Oh, sure. Yeah. But in Skimp. Yeah. Reckon he knowed what kind of junk was buried there when he sold us that map. Well, to be honest, that same thought's been bouncing around in my head, ever. And if he thinks he's... Never mind out, mind yeah. out. He's coming. He better not be talking about us. No. Well, howdy, Squire. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, how are my good friends today? Oh, pretty good, I reckon. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Glad indeed. 
And I want you to know that I'm glad to hear about your good fortune, too. Good fortune? Why, yes. Uh, I understand that the buried treasure's been pouring in here just like an oil gusher. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, well, just offhand, uh, how much do you estimate your wealth at at this time? Estimate it? Yes. Well, well, it's sort of hard to figure out exactly. Yeah, the, the liabilities is all frizz up for Hedge up, Abner. Uh, you'd say, though, that it was uh, quite considerable, wouldn't you, Lum? Well, yeah. Reckon you could say that if, if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. I knew all the time that our little venture would turn out this good when we first started it. <laughs> our little venture? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you got out of this one, Squire. What's that? You sold us the treasure map for sixty dollars. Well, yes, I know, Lum, but that was uh, merely temporary. See, uh, that was just while I had so many other business matters to take care of. But now I've cleared the deck, so to speak, and I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and plunge right in. Plunge in? You going swimming, Squire? Uh, no, Abner. I mean that I'm ready to take up my old duties with the treasure company. Oh, well, wait, Squire. Hey, I, I think it's only fair that we tell you oh, that... Oh, cut, cut, cut now, Lum. I know what you're going to say. And you're exactly right. I sold out my interest in the company, and it's only fair that I buy my way back in again. But right. I'm prepared to make you gentlemen a very attractive offer. An offer? Yes, sir. Uh, well, to come right out flat-footed, I'm prepared to invest $200 in the company. $200? All right, doggy squire, you just made... Abner, me. wait a minute. Huh? Don't rush into nothing. Oh. Uh, squire, would you excuse me and Abner for a second? I want to have a short board of directors meeting and take this up at it. Why, of course, of course. Go right ahead, Lum. Go right ahead. Uh, come here, Abner. Yeah. Right over here in the corner. Yeah, I'm coming. But, Lum, I don't see what you just meant. Just come over here and hash up. Is this fair enough? Yeah, this ought to do. Well, are you crazy? Here's Squire Skim offering us $200 out of a clear blue sky, and you act like we don't know whether we want to take it or not. Well, maybe we don't. Huh? I ain't sure if it'd be fair to take his money the way this treasury thing's turned out. Well, he's taking it from us when he sold us that treasury map. Uh, that is, he taking it from Cedric. Yeah, I know that, but we ought to for all we know, Law, Mr. Alton is still digging there. He might on cure for something valuable. Yeah, well, he might. Why, sure. That's a moose question, though. Why? Of course, on the other hand, he could find something. Why, of course he could. We don't know. And we ain't asking Squire to do this. Uh, he's doing it of his own violation. Of course he is. If he wants to put $200 in the company, why, I don't see any way we can stop him. This is a free country, ain't it? Yeah, you're right, Evan. You're right. Dead right. Yeah. Squire's in. Look, good right, for him. Right now. Yeah, come on, let's tell him the good news. <laughs> Uh, Squire, the directors has just met, and we've came to a decision on your case. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Very glad to hear it indeed, gentlemen. <laughs> now, uh, what's the verdict? What's well, Squire, the verdict? we decide... Oh, wait a minute. Abner, get the phone. I believe that was our ring. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll get it. Let's see. Where was I at now? Hello. Jot them down store and library. Abner Peabody doing oh, the yeah, talking. Oh, yeah. I recollect now what I started to say. Uh, what's that, Dick? I said we had came to a decision. Uh, right? Yes, I know. But what is it, Lum? Well, in view of the facts that you actually started us on this treasury ID in the first place, we decided that to... That you're a plumb it. out of it, Squire. Huh? Uh, no, I wasn't talking to you, Dick. I'll explain it all later. Yeah, much obliged for calling. Goodbye. <laughs> well, just a minute here, Abner. Yes, sir. Uh, do I understand that you men are turning down my offer? You're understanding exactly right, Squire. You snuck out of the Treasury Company when things was bad, and I dog as you can just stay out. Well, now, Abner, uh, wait by a minute. George, now you can't to... treat me like this, Abner. Why, if it wasn't for me, you men never would have found out about the treasure in the first place. Well, now, just a second. Now, Squire. that's gratitude for you. I'm telling you right now that you're going to regret this. I still have some claim in this, and I mean to get it. Good day. Abner, you crazy idiot. Now, look what you've did. I, doggies, I ain't going to have to divide up all our riches with no squire scheme. 
Not after the way he left out of the company a while back long. Yeah, we ain't got no riches to divide, no way. We have done it. We got more than we ever had. What are you talking about, anyway? That phone just now. Huh? Dick Huddleston said another box just come in there from Tennessee. And it's twice as big as the other. Twice as big? Yes, sir. I dog is we're getting down to that valuable junk I believe that's our ring. All right, no Islam, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, a second box arrived from Tennessee, but the old fellows were somewhat disappointed in its contents. In place of the gems and the jewels they expected to find in a box of buried treasure, they found old clothes, a few household articles, and a stuffed owl. However, they're still sure that these items are rare antiques of much value. As we look in on the little community, we find Lum back in the feed room checking over the treasure articles. Abner is talking on the telephone. Listen. I don't know, Sister Samson. We hadn't thought much about that. I reckon it'd be all right, though. Yeah, I tell you, maybe I better check with Lum just yeah, to Abner, make sure. I oh, no, I yeah. said I better check I, with I never noticed you on the phone, Abner. Oh, well, that's all right. It's just Sister Samson. I want to ask you something anyway. Oh, uh, her. Well, all, all I wanted to discuss was the address on them packages of buried treasure we got. The address? Yeah, it's a peculiar thing. I hadn't noticed it before, but I, I was looking at the boxes back there in the feed room just now. I seen both of them was addressed to you. Huh. Uh, come to me, huh? Yeah. I don't understand that. You'd think Mr. Olney would address them to me or Cedric. Uh, yeah, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Because Cedric's president of the company, and I'm the one that actually done all the talking to Mr. Olney and made all the arrangements with him and everything. You ain't got no idea how come he done that, have you, Abner? Why, uh... Uh-huh. Well, you don't need to shout about it. I'm standing right here. Well, I just talked to Sister Sampson on the phone there. Like oh. Well, how about it? Do you know anything See, about Mom, it? Sister Sampson wants to know she can borrow some of that buried treasure. Well, wait. Let's get this other matter straightened out first. What other matters there? Well, the one we were just talking about. The addresses on them packages. Oh, oh, yeah. Then. Well, Sister Simpson wanted me to ask I you. I don't what? care nothing about Sister Simpson. I'm curious about them addresses. Why he wrote your name on there instead yeah, of well, me Well, what letter. difference uh, makes whose name is wrote on there as long as a package gets here? I know, but it just don't look right. It don't? Well, for one thing, there's beginning to be a crowd that hangs around the post office down there just waiting to see them boxes come in and... Well, it just don't look good. Why don't it? Oh, I don't know. Somehow or other, folks have got the idea that I'm the head man of this outfit. I thought you said that uh, Cedric was president of it. Well, yeah, he is, but word sort of got around. Got around? You know how folks talk. More than likely, somebody started the rumor about me. Well, who'd start a rumor like that? Well, it might have been me. I don't know. I can't watch everything I say, you know. Anyways, it's sort of embarrassing having your name on the packages. Now, Baron G, you know something about it, too. Uh, Mom, I better not keep uh, Sister Simpson waiting no longer. She here. ain't missed you yet. She ain't been talking more than five minutes. Ever. Well, at least, wait, I better give her an uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, now answer me. Answer you about what, Mom? Stop stalling around, Abner. Did you tell that Mr. Alney that you was a high-up officer of our company? Ah, uh, let's see now, uh, Lom, I believe I jumped the tractor. Would you sort of come over that question again? You heard me. Now, come on, fess up. I seen you having quite a chin fest with him one time when me and Cedric was busy digging there. Yeah, I believe I did talk to him once, sir. A little. Sort of, maybe. And what'd you tell him? Well, Lom, he's one of them fellas, you know, that sort of eggs you on. And, what well, you know how folks talk, Lom, and... 
Word gets around. More than likely somebody just started a rumor <laughs> about me being president or something, you know. <laughs> you mean the rumor got around just twixt you and him? That's just about the way them things happen. Yep. I saw it happen time and That's again. the worst one thing I've ever heard of. You ought to be ashamed of your Abner. Being's a uh, egotistic. Well, now, Lom, I want to tell you that I... Just forget it, Abner. The subject's done closed. Huh? I'm going to write to Mr. Albany and straighten that out. And after this, you just be careful what rumors you go spreading around, that's all. Well, wait a minute, Lon, wait a minute. Sister Sampson wanted me to ask you a question, and I... I oh, just... well, what is it? Well, she wanted to know if she can borrow some of the articles in that buried treasure junk for the ladies' bazaar next Friday. For the ladies' bazaar? Yeah, she wants to put it on display. More than likely, they figure that'll get a big crowd there to buy them cakes and pies that the women folks are going to bake up. Well, I reckon it'd be all right. Well, Sort of hate to let that stuff get out of hand, though. Valuable like it is and all. More than likely half of it'll get stole. Oh, I don't think nobody want to steal much of that stuff, Lon. There ain't a whole lot in there that you could actually use. Well, no, can't use it, Zachary. You know, I was just thinking about that very thing last night, Lon. Uh, exactly what do you use buried treasure for? I mean, uh, uh, the kind we've been getting. Well, to be right honest, Abner, that's been bothering me a little bit, too. If you'd find diamond watches and ruby stick pins and pearl handle razor and stuff like that, well, you can just take it down and sell it and get rich out of that. But so far, we ain't come across none of that kind of treasure. Not even in the second box of stuff we got. No, you're right. Uh, Grandpappy Spears offered us a dollar and a half for that stuffed owl in there, but, lo me, I figured we'd get up in the millions and thousands. And so far, we ain't even hundred heirs out of this. No, but this other junk's worth a whole lot. We can yeah. just figure out what to do with it. You know good and well nobody would have gone to all the trouble of burying it if it hadn't been awful valuable. No. Well, what I tell Sister Simpson? Oh, uh, tell her... Tell her Granny's... I don't know what to say to her. Well, I know one thing I better tell her. Uh-huh. She's still on there. Oh, going strong, beating her gums for all she's worth. Hmm. Well, of course, see, uh, now. maybe, Lom, she's got the right idea what to do with this stuff. Put it on display, let folks look at it. Uh, don't they have big places somewhere where all they do is just put old stuff on display that way? What do they call them, uh, Carriums or anti carriums or something like that. Antiquariums, a fellow that's 80 year old. Oh. Uh, I think what you're trying to say is a museum. Yeah, yeah, museum at the <laughs> such ignorance. <laughs> yeah, I think they got one in Chicago. A 80 year old man? Oh, a museum. Oh. Uh, where, where'd that 80 year old man come in there? I don't know. I never saw him. What was his name? I don't know his name. Well, how'd you find out he's 80 year old then, Lum? You can't just walk up to some stranger on the street and ask him how old he is. That ain't polite. I never asked him. Did somebody tell you? No. Just guessed it, huh? Abner, there weren't no old man nowhere. There must be an old man somewhere, Lum. Well, fact is, we got one right here in Pine Ridge. Grandpa Masters. Now, there's an old man. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's who I was talking about. Now, does that satisfy you? Yeah, sure, sure. Good, good. What, what is Grandpa Masters doing in a museum in Chicago? I never said he was in a museum. You did, done it. I sat right here along and you said I that... never done no such a thing. Now, just forget it before I'll whop you one right on top of the head. Uh-huh. You was the one that brung up the museum yourself when we was talking about Sister Simpson. Sister Simpson? Oh, that reminds... Uh-huh! What do you think I ought to tell her, Long? You, you want to let her borrow the junk or not? Yeah, I reckon so. Or wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I agree with I believe i got an idea. An idea? Yeah, Is that me... the reason you're squinting your way? I always do that when I'm studying hard. Yeah, I figured you'd get an idea. I can just see that little old brain of yours just a flip-flapping. Yeah, I, why don't we just send this stuff direct to Chicago? Chicago? The bazaar is going to be over at the schoolhouse, Long. I ain't talking about no bazaar. I'm talking about the museum. Huh? We're going to sell our buried treasure to them. I grant is I knowed we'd figure some way to get rich off of this. Stuff. Well, that's well, what we'd do. Sell it to them. Will sell they it buy them. it? Will they buy it? Why, oh, sure. That's what they're in business for. They buy up all that old stuff and put it in counters, and then millions of customers come in and look at it. You mean that folks actually pay money to see all that old junk like that? Of course they do. Or wait a minute. I believe I'd just give myself a better idea. 
whiskey he did, huh? Yeah, we ain't going to sell it to no museum in Chicago, New York, or San Francisco, or nowhere else. Well, we want to make some money out of it, don't we, Long? We're going to, but we're going to do it right here. We're going to open up a museum of our own. We are in Pine Ridge? Yes, sir. I don't know why we should sit back and let somebody else make the profits off of it when we can actually do it ourselves. It belongs to us. Yeah, yeah. Sure, make it ourselves. Well, we don't owe them museums nothing. Or I don't think we do. Of course not. They never dug none of this stuff up. They just sit back and wait for somebody else to dig it up for them. I bound you they knowed all the time that treasure's buried over there in Tennessee. They was just waiting for somebody like us to come along and spade it up for them. <laughs> what, sure? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> they want us to do all the Emmanuel labor whilst they sit back and take in the money, that's all. Is that all they do? Why, sure. Huh. Oh, they go through and dust all the stuff off once a week or so, or maybe once a month. That's huh. about all there is to running a museum. All right, doggies, let's get to running one of them. That's the kind of business I always want to get into. Something where you don't have to do nothing except just sit there and haul in the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good at that kind of a business. That's for me, that's for me. <laughs> you seem to have a natural talent for it. Well, oh, when do we start? Now, where, where are we going to put it in? Well, right here in the store, I reckon. You mean charge folks to get in the store? Why, sure. We can clean them canned goods out of them shelves over there and make them into display counters. Yeah, well, wait a minute, old Lum. What if somebody just wants to buy groceries? We going to charge them to get in the store? Well, no, of course not. Well, how are we going to be sure what they come in here for? Some of them might say they're just coming in for groceries, and then after they get in here, why, they'll sneak some glances at the treasury. Sort of cast their eyes at it when we're not looking, you know. That's right, ain't Why, it? sure, more like they come in here and order some little old something that we keep down under the counter, and when we bend down to get it, why, they'll just snoop around, look at everything, the varmint. Yeah, well, maybe we better cut an extra door in here, one for the store and one for the museum. Yeah, but they could come in the store door and still look right over into the museum, wouldn't be, but about a five-foot look. Yeah, that's right, too. Everybody can do that, except old near-eyed Bates over here. He can't do it. Maybe we'll just have to give up the store. I can see right now that it's going to interfere with our museum work. Yeah, may- maybe we could just shove the store back into the feed room. Well, that-, that museum idea sounds awful good to me. Yeah, I know. Well, come on. Let's get started yeah, working yeah, on it. Start- what do we do first? What well, do do? first of all, we can start moving them canned tomatoes over there to the back end of the, in the feed room. Yeah, let's get started. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. i got something else to take care of first. Something to take care yeah, of? Don't take but a minute. Uh, hello, Sister Simpson. Ah. Oh. All right, I'm ready. Let's pull on My granny's there now. I believe that's our ring. All right, no, Islam, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, got him down, store. This is Love and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, at last. Lum and Abner have hit upon a method of realizing some profits from the packages of old articles they've been receiving from Tennessee. They're going to open up a museum in their store and charge an admittance fee. As we're looking on a little community today, we find the old fellows in their Jotham Down store and library busily arranging things for the museum. Dog Islam, it sure is getting to look like a museum's in here. <laughs> All cluttered up with this junk. Abner, I wish you'd stop calling this stuff junk. Oh. These are all high-class museum articles. Folks are going to pay good cash money to come in here and look at them. Yeah, I know they are. I just hope they won't want their money back after they get inside, though. Want their money back? Yeah, to be honest, Lom, I don't much believe I'd want to spend good money to look at a batch of old cooking pans and... Old clothes and old seashells and old shoe buttons. Now, of course, that stuff out there is sort of interesting, I reckon, but I don't know where I'd give ten cents to look at it or not, though. Well, it ain't so much the articles themselves, Abner. It's what's back of them that counts. What's back of them? Yeah, I mean, what the articles represented back in history. Huh? 
See, this stuff is valuable because it was once wore by old famous kings and queens and dukes and duchesses, er, duchesses, I mean. You mean that dukes wore old cooking pants? Yeah. Er, no, I mean oh, stuff they like... they must have looked cuter going around with them things on their head. <laughs> what, you'd have think they could have borrowed a few dollars from the king and bought themselves a decent hat to wear around the castle anyway. Abner, I never said they wore cooking pants around the castle. Well, oh, I just mean... wore them outside the castle, huh? Maybe they slapped them on their heads when they went out to battle them dragoons or something like that, Lom. That's more likely how them pans got so banged up. You know, I'd just give anything to know who wore that great big pan over there. Now, he had a head on it. <laughs> See that one with the Dan in the middle of it there? Granny, if you ain't got the worst one imagination. I bound you, I know who it was, too. Who? It was that fella that there, William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror? Yeah, I, I read about him in one of little Pearl school book once. I always wondered how he got that name, and now I know he got conked on the head. Abner, in the first place, it ain't William the Conqueror, it's William the Conqueror. Well, however you pronounce it, I know it's him. You know, I, I believe I'm beginning to get the idea of this museum stuff, Long. Well, that's fine, but just don't let it get out of hand. Of course, now, I don't think other folks are going to understand it, though. Now, you take Charlie Redfield, you know how ignorant he is, Long. When he looks at a pan, why, he'll just think it's something to cook in. He couldn't figure nothing else out of it. I know it, and that's why we got to print up little cards. Little cards? Yeah, little cards telling all about each article. That way our customers will know what they're looking at. I dog is now there's some sense to that idea. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah. You can't run a museum without them little signs all over everything. Well, let's get busy and write them up then. Yeah, all right. Now, you take the stuff from here on back and print the cards for it, and I'll write them for the rest of it. Yeah, dog I'm glad you set it up this time. It's a good one. It sure is. It's a good one. Just print them up right now. Uh -oh, oh, wait a minute. I believe that was our ring. Huh? Uh -oh, I'll get it, though. You better get to writing there, because you're slower at something like that than I am. Yeah, I'll need to. Yes, Hello, John I'm down store and library. L. Edwards Museum head talking. What's that, Miss Barton? He's going to wear one of them. Groceries? Oh, well, uh, why don't you try Dick Huddleston's store? Well, he's got good merchandise there. And, and low prices, too. R-O-K. Wrong. Well, you'll enjoy trading with him. Anybody ought to know that's a rock with me, but he won't. Yes, Ma. Charlie's so ignorant. Oh, not at all. Not at all. All right. Goodbye. Beats all how folks will keep interfering with your work. You'd think all we had to do was just sit here and sell groceries. Oh, sure. They ain't got no considerations at all. Not none at all. Uh, uh, how you coming with your signs there? Fine, fine. I got them all done already. All done? Yeah, yeah. yeah got them all done. Granny, you're faster at this than I ever allowed you to be. Well. <laughs> I wrote one card last night, and it take me about an hour to do it. Huh. Here, you've done all yours already. Oh, it don't take me no time at all. I'm pretty good at this writing just... Pick up a pencil and write stuff. Oh, of course, I've been writing since I was around 18 years old. It ought to come easy to me by now. You might be a genius at this museum work. Oh, I can tell right now. I've got talents for it. I have got them. Uh, oh, I said there must be something you'd be good at. And I never had to take up this museum work at no college to get it good, neither. No, sir. I tell you, I'm a wizard as I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hear what you wrote on some of them cards. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's see. Here's this one right here. A cup. A shell. Huh. A rock. Just a second. Is a that all you got down there? Just a rock? No. I got an Ari pointing up there to where the rock's at so they know what the card's for. A Ari? Yeah, I see then this next one here it says A Al. And next well, wait says, a minute. Wait a minute. You got to put down there more than just A Al. That ain't enough. Oh, yeah, that's right, I reckon. What's the matter with me? <laughs> Better write down the rest of it, yeah. Well, I was going to say, it's pretty silly. S T U F T. I guess that's the way you spell that. There, that picks it that up. A L stuffed. Well, that ain't enough neither. You got to say more than that. Well, let me see. More, huh? Of course, I could say he's dead. I know that for. I, I, I set a cracker down there by him yesterday, and he never nibbled on it at all. Well, I know he's dead. Oh, sure. Stands to reason he is. They never would have buried him in the first place if he hadn't have been dead. He's well, dead. Abner, I ain't arguing with you about that. I can see he's dead. Anybody can tell that. Well, what do you want to bother to write it down on a card for him? I never told you to write that down. You told me to write something else down there. Doggy, that's about the all is you can write. 
When you said I stuffed all this stuff, Lon, you just about covered the whole subject. Well, I mean, you got to put down all that historical stuff. Huh? What king they all belong to and what castle they float around in. Got your dates and all such as that. Dates? Yeah. Well, I don't know what else he sparked when he was alive. Oh, I mean dates like 1816 and 1722. Oh, here, let, let me read you that in I wrote. And maybe you can get the idea of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I can help you fix it up all right if it don't sound good. Well, uh, where is that thing? i put it here. No wonder you wrote yours so fast. Oh, here it is. Now, listen to this good and close. Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, what article is this card of yours for, Long? It's for that old swallowtail coat we got out of that second box of buried treasury. Oh, well, that's easy. All you got to say there is just... A coat, C O T E coat. That does that. Well, that's where you're wrong, right there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now listen to this and learn something. Yeah. This swaller tail coat was wore by some king a long time ago and has not been wore since 1815. The king off times wore it. Just a minute, how long? How, how did you know he ain't wore it since 1815? Well, it says it right inside the coat. Here, yeah, I'll show it to you. Look at here. See right there, over the inside pocket there. Hey, see, let me get my spectacles down on my eyes. It says, Majestic Clothiers, since 1815. Well, I'll be a polka-dotted possum. I reckon why he stopped wearing it, it looks in good condition there. Well, that's more than likely when he died. Huh. So his kin folks just took it and preserved it because he was a king. Well, how do you know he was a king? Well, it tells right here. See, it says here, Clothes fit for a king. Uh, Had them fit right on him, huh? Oh, yeah. Nothing was too good for him. None of that mail order stuff for him. Dog, as I wished I'd have been a king. You know what? That's something I'd love to do is a little of that kinging sometime if I get around. Well, here, let me finish reading this card I wrote here. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear the rest of it. King, uh, the king oft times wore this coat to sociable functions around the castle. Ah, uh-huh. Notice silk buttons which denotates high class living customs in them days. Ah. Uh-huh. Also note in left hand pocket bill from Moxley's Cleaners for seventy cents. Seventy cents. This shows to what high cost a royal king had to go to to be neat and make a big impress on his subjects and vessels. Hands off. Hands off. The king's hands was off? No, no, they was on. Huh? I think. I just meant that I want the customers to keep their hands off the museum stuff. Oh, I thought if his hands off, he didn't need no buttons on there at all. Uh, makes it seem more valuable. We don't want nobody to touch it. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty silly. No, that sounds like good. It's interesting. I'm... Glad I got to see it myself. Well, you get the idea of what we want wrote on the cards now, don't Yeah, you? I'll pay a dime to get in to see that any time. Just try to figure out stuff about the king from these articles here, huh? Yeah, that's it. Now, get busy and do yours over, and don't just write down a owl. I won't. I won't. Let's see now. Write down what I ought to do here. Let's see what can I say about Now, what we really ought to do is to get Will Spencer to actually print these up down there at his print shop. That'd make it look more official. But maybe we can do that later on after the money starts rolling. Uh, Mom, how do you spell muscles? Muscles? Yeah. Oh, muscles. Huh? Uh, M-U-S-S, mus, U-L-S, muscles. Yeah, (laughs) what's the matter? I had a I-L-S there to you. (laughs) Listen to this now, Mom. Yeah, go ahead now. Read it to me. Let's see if you've done any better this time. Yeah, uh, these shoes was wore by some old-timey king. Note broke shoe strain. This shows Kang had strong muscles and dressed by main strength. Well, that's pretty good so far, but it sounds a little silly. Dressed by main strength. Oh, you know, judging from the shoes here, long that King must have been a peculiar duck. Peculiar <laughs> duck? Yeah, look here, with two left feet. Oh. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, they do look like they're for the same foot. Why, well, sure. <laughs> oh, Randy, she must have been a comical-looking somebody. Oh, yeah, bound to be. Silliest-looking things I've ever seen in my life. I'd left to saw him. That'd be worth a dime, then, just to get to see him anyway. Why, anybody would buy a pair of shoes. Shoes like, wait a minute, where'd you get them shoes? Uh, well, they're sitting right there. Hey, right, Granny, you put them things right back where you got them. Huh? Them never belonged to no king. That's a pair of my shoes.